Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video, Comparing Correlation and Regression Using SPSS. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor three variables. One is a participant ID. I have 100 records here in this data set. And then I have two continuous variables, substance use and depression. And let's assume that these scores were generated by a psychometric instrument designed to measure substance use and another designed to measure depression. With a higher score on the substance use variable, meaning more severe symptoms related to substance use, and a higher score on the depression variable, meaning more severe depressive symptoms. Now, as I talk about correlation and regression, I'm actually speaking about two specific statistics. Correlation, as I'm using it here, refers to Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, otherwise known as Pearson's R. Regression refers to a linear regression. So it's Pearson's correlation compared to linear regression. So first, let's take a look at regression. So say that we have these two variables and we want to understand the strength of association. How how strongly these variables are associated and in what direction they're associated. So does one variable increase as the other increases or does one variable decrease as the other variable increases? We would use a correlation for this. And a correlation, just like a regression, can't directly be used to determine a causal relationship. Correlation just provides us the strength of association and the direction. So in looking at these two variables, if we were not trying to predict the value of one variable by having the value of the other, and we're just looking at strength of association, we would calculate the correlation between the two variables. Go to Analyze, Correlate by Variate, and then I'm going to move both variables over to the Variables list box here on the right. I'm not going to change any of the other settings. I'm just going to leave them set as default and click OK. And we have this one table, correlations. And we can see that the correlation between substance use and depression is 0.608. And that is statistically significant. And of course, the correlation between depression and substance use is the same. So we have two variables and one correlation coefficient. It doesn't matter which way we enter these variables into the dialog, the correlation is the same. There's one correlation for these variables. Now the value of the correlation coefficient, r, can range from negative 1, a perfect negative correlation, to 1, a perfect positive correlation. In this case we can see that our correlation coefficient is positive. So we know we have a positive correlation between the variables, meaning as one variable increases, as the value increases, we'd expect the other variable to increase. In a negative correlation, we would have one variable decreasing, and that would be associated with the other variable increasing. So now let's take a look at linear regression. So using these same two variables, Let's say that we believe that from this substance use variable, we can predict the value of the depression variable. So in this case, we're saying that we believe that the substance use variable is a good predictor of the depression variable. And as substance use increases, the depression variable would increase as well. And that a prediction could be made when you have the substance use score of what the depression score would be. And again, we're not saying here that substance use causes depression. We're saying that when we have the substance use value, that allows us to predict the depression score. And of course, there would be some error there, meaning it's not going to perfectly predict the depression score. And to determine this, we use a linear regression to try to predict 
an outcome variable, in this case depression, with a predictor variable, in this case substance use. So go to Analyze, Regression, and then Linear. And the dependent variable is the outcome variable. So in the example here, it's going to be the depression variable. The independent variable is the predictor variable, in this case substance use. I'm going to go to Statistics and add R squared R squared change, descriptives, and part and partial correlations. Click continue, and then click OK to perform the regression. And here for the output for regression, we see we have a correlations table, and the value is 0 0.608, Pearson correlation. Pearson's R is part of the output for regression. Now moving down to model summary, we can see we have the value of R again, 0 0.608, and R square. Now R square is the amount of variance in the dependent variable, in this case depression, explained by movement in the predictor variable, in this case substance use. It's also equal to the coefficient of determination, because it's the square of R. So if we take Pearson's R and square it, that gives us the coefficient of determination. And moving down to the coefficients table here, at the end of the output for regression, we can see that the correlation is equal to the standardized regression coefficient here under standardized coefficients, 0 0.608. And from this coefficients table, we can build regression equation, y equals mx plus b y in this case would be the depression variable, m would be the slope, which is this value here under substance use in this row, 0.689, x would be the observation on the substance use variable, and b would be the intercept listed here in the constant row, 16.796. So we use linear regression to predict the value of an outcome variable by using the predictor variable, and we use correlation to measure the strength of association between two variables. I hope you found this video on comparing correlation and regression in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.